Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at partnership and specifically admission of a new partner. This is part three of five. This topic is covered in advanced accounting and obviously it's covered on the CPA exam. Now, I would really like to connect with my viewers. So please connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn. I always post uh, additional lectures, tips for the exam, so on and so forth. If you're a Facebook user, you could go to my Facebook page, Accounting Lectures, or or definitely I want you to connect with me on YouTube by subscribing because this is where I post all my new lectures as well as my Twitter account. And my website is farhatlectures.com. Let's go ahead and record changes in ownership and membership in a in a uh, in a partnership there are two methods that are frequently used one method is called the bonus method so when we when we accept a new partner we use the bonus method and what does the bonus method implies it implies that assets are increased by the amount of the asset invested by the partner being admitted so what's going to happen we're going to have more assets of course we're going to have more assets and any difference between the asset invested and credited the new partner accounts capital is adjusted to the capital account of the other partners. So I'm going to just give you some numbers real quick, but we're going to work on this more specific example. Let's assume we have a new partner and that new partner invested $100,000. That's how much they invested. But what's going to end up happening, we're only going to give them $80,000 in capital. Hold on a second. Didn't you say they invested 100000 Yes, they did. But we're going to only give them 80000 Take it or leave it. What does that mean? It means there's $20,000 $20, and that additional $20,000, it's going to go to the other partners, to the, to, the, to the other capital account. The money goes to the, the whole amount goes to the partner, partnership, but the capital account of the other partner increases. Or this partner invested $100,000, but we're going to give them $120,000 in capital. Why? Because we're so desperate for money and desperate for this individual, we want to attract them. Therefore, we gave them more capital than they invested. Then it's going to be taken away from the existing partner. And this is the bonus method. Again, we'll work an example. Don't worry about it. The other method that we're going to be that we could use is called the goodwill method. What is how do we do this under the goodwill method? Under the goodwill method, under the goodwill method, a new asset is recorded that's based on the difference. So the new asset is recorded based on the difference between the value implied by the amount of the consideration and the value reported in the partnership books. So simply put, what's going to happen when somebody contribute money to us? What's going to happen? We're going to have to find out how much is the value of the of the partnership worth. How does that work? Well, here's how it works. Um, if somebody contributed uh, $50,000, oops, $50,000, and we said, we are going to give you, we are going to give you 20% of the partnership for that money. Well, what does that mean? It means we are implying, if we take $50,000 divided by 0.2, we are implying that the partnership is worth 250000 so we're going to find how much is the partnership worth. Then based on that, we're going to back into the journal entry. So just know that we're going to have to find the implied value. If somebody paid 50000 and we gave them 20%, it means the partnership is worth 250000 Sorry. And if you watch a show called uh, Shark Tank, I'm, I'm sure you do on CNBC. So when a new when a, when a new entrepreneur comes in and they would say, "I will give you um, if you give me one hundred thousand dollar, I'll give you twenty percent of my business." And immediately, what this what these people do, they grab their calculators and they take one hundred thousand divided by twenty percent to find out what to find out how much does this individual valuing their business. So if we take one hundred thousand divided by point two. The business is worth half a million. So this is how they start the negotiation. They saying, well, is your business really worth half a million? Because that's what you're telling us. You're telling us your business is worth half a million. So we're finding the implied value. Okay, so let's take the best way to illustrate this is to work examples. And we're just going to start with a very simple examples, then build up. We have two partners, Phil and Tim are partners in an electrical repair business. The, the respective capital balance is 90000 for Phil, 50000 for Tim. And they share profit and losses equally. Because the partners are, are confronted with personal financial problems, they decided to admit a new partner, so they need money, to the partnership. After an extensive interviewing process, they elected to admit Don 
into the partnership. Prepare the journal entry of the admission of Don under each of the following conditions. So we're going to have a scenario, different scenarios. The first scenario, we're going to assume that Don acquires bought one fourth, twenty five percent of Phil's capital. Guess what? The partnership did not get anything. Okay, and they paid Phil thirty thousand. So here's what's going to happen. Um, nine. This is Phil's capital. Phil's capital is ninety thousand. Phil's given up twenty five percent. So Phil's given up twenty two thousand five hundred. So Phil will reduce his capital by 22500 and Don will be admitted and they will get 22500 So simply put, the partnership did not benefit. The partnership as a business did not benefit. Basically, Phil gave up 22500 It was replaced by Don. So notice, no cash is involved here. No cash for the partnership. Obviously, Phil took the cash and Phil deposited that cash in his personal account. But the partnership itself did not receive the cash. So notice this is basically a transaction in terms of cash. It happened outside the partnership, but they had a partnership structure. Don acquired one-fifth of each of Phil and Tim's capital. Now, Phil gave up 20%. Tom gave up 20%, which is 90,000 times 20% equal to 18,000. So Phil's capital will go down by 18. Tim's capital will go down by 10. And that's going to go to... The new partner Don. So Don acquired the twenty-eight thousand uh, of uh, eighteen thousand coming from Phil, ten thousand coming from Tom. Notice this is outside the partnership. What do we mean by outside the partnership? The partnership did not receive a penny in, the, in these transactions. All what they do is they gave up some, they gave up their balances. So the partnership, in a sense, did not benefit. Now we're going to work where the new partner invests directly into the partnership and this is and we're going to be using the bonus method to account for this now this is where the new partner don sends invest in the partnership don acquires one fifth which is 20 percent um one fifth capital interest for sixty thousand dollar cash investment total capital after the admission is two hundred thousand so here's what happened we already have phil with ninety thousand tim with fifty thousand and now we have sixty thousand dollar in cash so the total capital is two hundred thousand and what's going to happen don's said that i am going to get twenty percent out of this so he's going to get twenty percent out of this so twenty percent 20% out of 200,000 is 40,000. So notice, uh, Don paid 60,000. Don's getting 40,000. Why? Hey, look, if you want to invest with us, we're going to give you 40,000 for your 60,000. Either take it or leave it. So basically what's going to happen, the new partners, because we're using the bonus method, they're going to get the bonus. So first, the partnership will receive $60,000 in cash. So this transaction involved the partnership itself. Don will get 40,000 in capital because this is how much based on the computation they're going to give them. Now, what about the, uh, the additional $20,000 that that Don invested, it's going to go to the capital account of Phil and Tim 50-50. So Phil and Tim will, will would split that additional capital as a bonus to their account 50-50. So this is the bonus method. Now, let's assume we're going to be using the goodwill method. So Don invest $40,000 for one-fifth of the business. Now, here's what's going to happen here. First, we have to find out how much is the partnership worth. If, if Don invested $40,000 and we gave Don 20%, it means we are implying that the partnership is worth $200,000. Okay, let's do this. So, we are implying that the partnership is worth $200,000. Now we can compute We can compute this. Phil's account is 90. Tim's account is 50. What's left is, which is, which is uh, 90 plus 40. Uh, 90 plus 50 equal to 140 plus we're going to give down 40 so what's left is the twenty thousand dollar goodwill because it's supposed to be two hundred thousand if phil's getting if phil has ninety thousand balance tim forty thousand dollar balance and we're giving down only forty thousand because that's what they said we said we're going to give them forty thousand what's going to happen we have twenty thousand left and that's twenty thousand is the goodwill so let's go ahead and journalize the goodwill so 
Don invested $40,000 cash and Don got $40,000 in in the business. Now, as a result of this transaction, we find out that our company is worth more, right? Because because what happened is the company only had here from a business perspective, here's what happened. From a business perspective, from a business perspective, um, the company was worth before Don 140,000. Okay, the 90 plus the 50. If Don contributed 40,000, then the business would have been 180. But what we said is when Don contributed $40,000, we sold him the $40,000 on a 20% discount, basically. So the company is worth 200,000. So we revalued the partnership. The partnership is worth more, more than 180. The partnership actually is worth 200,000. So as a result, what's going to happen because the partnership is worth more, more, and we know this because somebody was willing to invest with us, we're going to record an asset called goodwill and we are going to increase the existing partners capital balances by 10,000 why did we do so because somebody said your company is worth more than what it is okay and because of this extra more the, the existing partner they get basically increase in their capital okay so let's summarize so acquisition of an interest by an investing asset if the fair value of the asset invested equal to the book value of the capital asset acquired, there is no good no goodwill and bonus. So somebody invested ten thousand dollar, we gave them ten thousand dollar in capital. There is no bonus. There is no goodwill. If somebody invested ten thousand dollar in in a business, and we gave them only eight thousand dollar in capital, then we have two thousand dollar going to the existing partners. So there's a bonus to the existing partners, or a bonus or a goodwill to the company. If if the if the person invested ten thousand dollar and we gave them twelve thousand dollar, we gave them more for the for their book value, then the additional two thousand dollar goes to the new partner, and we'll see an example. Okay, so if somebody is getting more than what they paid for, they will get a bonus. If somebody get less what they paid for, the bonus goes to the other partners. Okay, and the best way is to uh, to work through a series of examples. We have B, S, and L, Beth, Steph, Steph, and Linda, have been operating a small gift shop for several years. The partners concluded that the business needed to expand in order to provide an adequate return to the partners. The following balance sheet is for the partnership prior to the admission of the new partner, Mary. So they want to accept Mary, but this is what their position looks like. Cash, 160. Other assets, 640. Total assets of 800,000. They have liabilities of 200,000. And this is their capital balance. Beth right now owns 40%. Steph owns 40%. And Linda owns 20%. Okay. But they want to admit Mary into the partnership. So we're going to work a few examples to show you how, how, how Mary is admitted and how do we account for that transaction. Under the first scenario, prepare the journal entry uh, to record the admission of Mary. Assuming one, Mary is to invest sufficient cash to receive one sixth of capital interest. So Mary to receive one sixth of the interest. Right now, the total existing capital is 600,000. Okay, now what we're saying is when Mary is added, Mary is added based on, uh, based on, not based on, she's gonna be owning one sixth of the partnership, one sixth of the partnership. But we don't know how much she's invested, but she's gonna be getting one sixth. Well, what does that mean? It means 600,000 that represent right now only five sixths of the company. So the 600,000 represent five six. So simply put, the company should be worth 720,000 after Mary invest. Okay, so how much Mary would need to invest? Well, if the company should be worth 700 and the capital balances should be 720, and right now it's 600,000, for Mary to get 1.6, she will need to invest 120. Simply put, if you take now 720 multiplied by 1.6, it's going to be 120,000. Okay, so basically Mary is... Mary is is er, is getting six one sixteenth of the company. Okay, one more time, but first we needed to find out how much is the company's worth. So one divided by six equal to sixteen percent times seven twenty, and Mary will need to invest one hundred and twenty thousand to receive one sixth of the business. So that's the deal. You invest one twenty, we'll give you one six. Right now the company is worth based on your admission seven twenty. Okay. 
Let's take a look at, so let's look at the journal entry. The journal entry will debit cash, credit Mary's Capital 120. This is what actually happened. There's really no goodwill, nothing. Just we told Mary, you, you get one six and we computed how much that one six is worth. Now, prepare, this is a different scenario. Prepare the journal entry to record the admission of Mary, assuming Mary is to invest 160 for one fifth of the capital. Now Mary is gonna invest 160 and get one fifth. Now let's take a look at this. Well, let me do it for you first. Beth, well, let's look at it anyhow, it doesn't matter. Beth has 265, Steph is 215, Linda is 160, and now we're gonna add Mary's capital. Mary's capital is 160. So the total capital invested will be 760. Okay, after Mary invests 160,000. Mary is to receive 20% ownership interest. Well, if we take 720 and give Mary 20% of the current of the new capital, she would receive 152. So Mary spent 150, we gave her 152 in capital, we have $8,000 bonus basically. What is that bonus going to go? That bonus is going to go to Beth, Steph, and Linda. How is it going to go? Well, remember, they're 40, 40, and 20. So here's the journal entry. We debit cash 160. The partnership received actual cash 160. Mary's capital only increased by 152. And although she paid 160, but hey, if you want to join us, you're going to have to get less than what you paid for. And the 8,000 is split 40 to Beth, 40 to Steph, and 20 to Linda. So that's how it works. Okay, let's assume in the same, uh, again, one fifth. And now we're going to be assuming we're going to be using the goodwill method. How does the goodwill method works? Well, if we're saying Mary is investing 160,000 and we are saying Mary is to get 20%, now we're going to value the company. We're going to value the company, the partnership. And what we say is this. Okay, what we're saying is 160 divided by 0.2, we're saying the company is worth $800,000, okay? This is the total implied capital, how much the capital should be. Well, how much is the total invested capital? Well, the total invested capital is this. After Mary invests 160, when it's added to everyone, the total invested capital is 760 right here from the prior computation. Well, and now the company is worth 800000 it means they're a forty thousand dollar goodwill. Again, the seven sixty is what Bath balance is. Linda, Bath, Bath, Linda, and Steph, and add Mary to them. Okay, but the company is worth eight hundred thousand because Mary was paying get only twenty percent of one sixty, which is make the company worth eight hundred thousand. So there's a goodwill of forty thousand dollar. Obviously, what do we need to do? We need to uh, record the journal entry. We debit goodwill. Credit Beth account sixteen thousand, credit Steph account sixteen thousand, and credit Linda's account. So the goodwill went to went to the existing partner. Now obviously Mary's gonna get one hundred and sixty thousand for her new capital. Okay, so this is a goodwill example. We work the same thing with a bonus example. Now um, prepare the serial journal entries. Uh, assuming three, Mary is to invest one hundred and sixty thousand for one fourth capital interest. So now we're going to be using the bonus method, and Mary is to receive one fourth, which is twenty five percent. Let's see what happened now. After Mary added her money in, the total capital invested should be seven sixty. Now, if we give her, if we give Mary twenty five percent, Mary will get nine hundred and ninety thousand. Here, here we, are, we are desperate for Mary. We want Mary to join the partnership. So Mary paid 160 in cash. Mary received 190 in capital. So Mary received a $30,000 bonus capital. So let's, who's gonna, who's gonna pay for that bonus? Not pay, who's gonna, who's gonna give up their capital accounts? Well, the other three. The other three will have to give up in total of 30,000 in relationship to their current ownership, 40, 40, and 20. So here's what's going to happen. Mary invested 160. Mary is to get 190. What happened to the other 30,000? Beth will give up 12,000. Steph will give up 12,000. And Linda will give up 6,000. 40%, 40%, and 20%. Multiplying by 30,000. Let's, let's compute this using the Goodwill method. If Mary is to invest 
160 for one fourth capital well one fourth means right now right now the current capital for the company is 600,000 okay the current capital is 600,000 how did I know it's 600,000 well right now if you add up those three they're up to 600,000 so this is how I know it's 600,000 and now we are going to give Mary one fourth we're going to give Mary 25 percent that means the 600,000 represents 75 percent of the company what is 600,000 what's 600,000 divided by 600,000 divided by 0.75 equal to 800,000 we are implying the company is worth 800,000 okay but the invested capital is only 760 after Mary invest her money so we have a goodwill of 40,000 oh let's let's journalize the entry we're gonna debit cash 160 we're gonna debit goodwill uh, 40,000 and uh, Mary in that situation would receive 200,000 in capital but basically Mary got all the um, all the goodwill basically Mary got all the goodwill because she got one-fourth of the company so she received more than what what she contributed okay so hopefully uh, this will this 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 illustration will help you understand how we uh, how we uh, how we account for transaction so notice the other partners here just gonna let you know did not reduce their capital basically all the all the uh, all the new all the 40,000 went to went to went to Mary so there is no reduction in their capital balances in contrast to the bonus method in contrast to the bonus method where their capital was reduced just so this is just for you to pay attention to if you have any questions any comments by all means email me if you're studying for the CPA exam by all means study hard make sure to visit my website for additional lectures if you happen to visit please consider donating thank you study hard it's worth it